Good morning, good, morning, good evening, evening, good afternoon, good afternoon whatever, whatever time, time of day you're watching this quick video. This is, is part two of Louis Riel, Métis, Métis and First Nations Nation Resistance in the, the uh, Northwest, Northwest Territories, Territories, including the Red, Red River Rebellion, Rebellion and the Northwest Rebellion. Take a quick look at this map of Canada. Notice that British Columbia is not yet in Canada, nor is Prince Edward Island or Newfoundland. Louis Riel was the leader of the provisional government. That is the answer to number 15 in our uh, worksheet, our reading guide. Louis Riel spent time to study in the priesthood, but he decided it was not for him. He left school and he studied in a law office and then he moved to West. By the summer of 1868, he was back in the Red River Settlement. There, his fluency in both French and English, his education, and his pride in the Métis people made him a natural leader. So those are some of the key points that you would need for question 16 on a reading assignment. Point number one, he studied in the priesthood. Point number two, um, he studied, he studied in a law, law office. office. Uh, uh, point number three, three he was fluent in both French and English. And uh, point, point number four, connected to the other ones, is he had a high level of education. And he had, uh, I guess the next point would be, he had pride in the Métis people. All these things combined together made him a natural leader. He was also a good orator, which is not on this um, page. The Métis wrote, wrote a list of rights. Here's a few of them. They asked for the right to elect their own legislative assembly with the power to pass all local laws, the right to approve or reject any federal government laws affecting the Red River area, the right to elect local officials such as sheriff and constables, the right to have land set aside for schools, roads, and public buildings, that the territories of Rupert's land and the Northwest enter the Dominion of Canada as a province, uh, the right to have Winnipeg connected by rail to the nearest rail line. In addition to some of the ones that I've read out for you, they were also interested in language rights to protect the uh, French language and uh, the culture of the Métis people. And the culture would also include uh, the right to keep their religion, which was predominantly Catholic. They also were asking for treaties to be signed between the federal government of Canada and the First Nations people. Most of the uh, requests seem fairly reasonable. Thomas Scott was a surveyor that had been a member of the Canada Party, a group of English Protestants, speaking Protestants in Red River that was uh, wanting to make the northwest part of Canada. While well in jail, Scott insulted and attacked the guards. He also threatened to escape and kill Riel. Scott was brought before a traditional Métis military council, similar to the ones that had dealt with crimes during the Métis Buffalo Hunt. This council found Scott guilty of insubordination. Scott was sentenced to death and shot by a Métis firing squad on March 4, 1870. Many people in Quebec and Ontario reacted strongly to the ex execution of Thomas Scott. Many French-speaking Roman Catholics in Quebec saw Riel as a man who stood up for French rights. Riel had stated that Scott was shot to make the government in Ottawa respect the Métis. Many English-speaking Ontario Protestants called Riel a murderer. They demanded that Prime Minister MacDonald sent an army to the Red River settlement to capture Riel and bring him to Canada for punishment. They also thought the army might be needed to protect English Canadians in the Red River area. The reaction over the execution of Thomas Scott put the Conservative government of Sir John A. MacDonald in um, a difficult position. Okay, so Thomas Scott was uh, sentenced to death and shot by a Métis firing squad. And that is uh, an answer to question 17 in your reading guide. And John A. MacDonald was the Prime Minister. Number 19, question number 19, was this accurately uh, defined or called a rebellion? Uh, the Red River Rebellion, or First Rebellion, is sometimes used to uh, label this event. 
The term rebellion is used when people attempt to overthrow a government that is legally in power. However, some historians raise the question as to whether there was a government in power in the Red River. Perhaps there was a vacuum of power, and therefore this was a legitimate provisional government. Red River was not going to belong to the government of Canada until December 1st, 1869, when Prime Minister McDonald heard about the troubles there. He told Lieutenant Governor McDougall not to enter the area until the problems were resolved. Therefore, it can be said or argued that the Métis overthrew the government in power? Um, rather, could it be argued they set up a provisional or temporary government in order to negotiate the best terms possible for the entry of the area into Confederation? The Métis were asking for the right to enter Confederation with a provincial status rather than enter as a territory. In your opinion, should the events in the Red River in 1869 and 1870 be classified as a rebellion? Give reasons for your answer. Support your opinion with evidence. Use the word because. Following the events of 1869 and 1870 in the Red River area, Louis Riel had fled to the United States. He was elected to Canadian Parliament twice, but was prevented from taking his seat. He suffered an emotional breakdown and spent nearly two years in asylums in Quebec. In 1875, he was granted amnesty. If he stayed out of Canada for five years, he ended up in Montana, where he married and had two children. On June 4, 1884, a four-man delegation, including Gabriel Dumont, arrived in Montana. Riel agreed to accompany them back to Saskatchewan so he could help them. Okay, some of the important takeaways there is he had a lot of things going on when he was in exile, including a marriage, children, uh, being elected to parliament, and suffering emotional uh, breakdowns and going to an asylum. So there's this whole issue going on with... Um, mental health and getting support with that. Now, Louis, Louis Riel is still a strong leader, and the uh, four people that went to ask him to come back to help lead them recognize his leadership. Question 21 in the reading guide, this is 2021. 21 specifically, what was he supposed to do to get his amnesty? He needed to stay out of Canada for five years in order to get amnesty. The Northwest resistance began March 26, 1885, with the Battle of the Small Town of Duck Lake. Gabriel Dumont and a small group of Métis attacked Superintendent Crozer of the, of the Northwest Mounted Police and some of his men as they were on their way to rescue arms and ammunition from a store in Duck Lake. Twelve of Crozier's men were killed and eleven wounded after a half-hour battle. Five Métis were killed after the Battle of Duck Lake. The Métis destroyed Fort Carlton. The non-native inhabitants there had fled to Prince Albert. Chief Poundmaker traveled at the end of March to Battleford to meet with the government agent to discuss getting more food for his people. When the townspeople first heard the first people were coming, they fled to the safety of the fort. The town was deserted when Poundmaker arrived and the government agent refused to come out of the fort to talk with him. Poundmaker's companions became frustrated and angry. They broke windows and took supplies. There were different perspectives in the area. Um, the Caucasian settlers along the Saskatchewan River were not interested in joining the Métis in the armed resistance. They were very angry at the federal government, but they refused to follow Riel once he decided to take an action in such a violent manner. Most of the first people decided not to take up arms against the federal government. Two exceptions were bands led by Poundmaker and Big Bear. should also mention that Big Bear wanted to uh, find a peaceful solution, but not everybody who was under his authority agreed with that course of action. Colonel Otter located Poundmaker and about 200 followers at Cut Knife Hill near Poundmaker's Reserve. Otter had hoped to make a surprise attack, but the Cree were ready for them and drove them off. Poundmaker's men had every opportunity to kill Otter's soldiers, but Poundmaker held them back and allowed the soldiers to return to Battlefort. He saw no honor in killing an enemy who had already been defeated. 
Now, thinking critically, how might Johnny McDonald, the Prime Minister, have avoided this conflict, this resistance? That's question 23. You can think and try and find some ideas of your own. I'll give you some suggestion that perhaps he could have listened, negotiated, and met or found some alternative way to have a conversation or discussion through uh, oral words or writing rather than um, a military solution. Riel was put on a trial in Regina for treason. He was found guilty by a jury of six English-speaking Canadian men. The jury asked the judge for mercy. The judge had no choice about the sentence but, 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 the but the judge, judge had, had no choice, choice about the sentence. sentence. The automatic, automatic sentence for treason, treason was execution. execution. The, decision the decision to hang Riel caused a great reaction. reaction. Petitions, Petitions were sent, sent to Prime, Prime Minister McDonald asking that Riel, Riel be pardoned or that his sentence be changed, changed from hanging to imprisonment. imprisonment. Queen Victoria ordered the Governor General to ask Riel not to be hanged. The newspapers are full of articles on the subject. The debate was carried on in the House of Commons and the Cabinet in Ottawa. Sir John as, uh, A. Macdonald took months to make up his mind. French Canadians were against the execution of Louis Riel. They saw him as a hero um, fighting for rights to the French language. Okay, a really fast, fast recap, recap of what we've just, just been talking about. about. For, uh, uh, if you're following along in the reading guide, uh, question, question 23, 23, how might Prime Minister McDonald have avoided the resistance? resistance? The answer could be he could have had a dialogue, a conversation. Uh, question, question 24, who wanted Louis Riel to be pardoned and not hanged? Uh, page uh, 252, or Google, you can Google this. Uh, the main one would be the French Canadians, but there'd also be other groups that, of course, would be on Louis Riel's side, saying that he is uh, fighting for rights, not a, a murderer or a criminal. Um, and the people on his side would be French Canadians, First Nations, and the Métis. Next, uh, the jury also asked the uh, judge for mercy. Um, and so the jury, although they found him guilty, uh, we're asking not for the uh, death penalty. That's the answer to question 25. And question 26, in your opinion, why do you think John A. McDonald did not step in and stop the hanging, in your opinion? Okay, this is something you have to do a little bit of inferring from the text. Um, but if you need a little bit of help with that, the answer is most likely that he was under a lot of political pressure to consider where his votes came from and he was probably considering that a lot of his votes were coming from the english-speaking parts of canada including ontario and he was thinking about how those people would vote um, number 27 how did french canadians feel about the hanging they were against the hanging Gabriel Dumont was one of the most respected men in the Northwest. He was an excellent writer and marksman. He had come to the Northwest in 1872 from Manitoba because he was unhappy with conditions there. Dumont spoke French and six First Nations languages. He was a natural leader. Also to note, he had the idea of arguing for a guerrilla military tactics and he was um, the military strategist of the resistance. He proved to be a skillful military strategist. He'd often argue about 
military plans with Riel. Um, that is Gabriel Dumont. And that are, is the information you need for question 28 in your reading guide. Poundmaker was a Creek chief and adopted son of Crowfoot. Crowfoot adopted him in an effort to keep peace between their peoples. Poundmaker got his name from his skill at driving buffalo into pounds or enclosures where they were trapped and then killed. Poundmaker's people were having trouble adjusting to farming life. After the rebellion, Poundmaker was sentenced to three years in prison, but was released after several months. He died while visiting Chief Crowfoot shortly after his release and was buried in Crowfoot's camp. In 1967, his body was returned to his reserve and buried on the hill where the Battle of Cut Knife took place. Big Bear. This is the answer for a number 30 of our reading guide. Big Bear was very unhappy with the federal government's treatment of the first people and hoped that threats of resistance would make the government take notice. He did not want to take part in a confrontation. He wanted to resist peacefully. But when his followers took up arms as their leader, he took responsibility for their actions. He was sentenced to three years for his Part in the resistance, like Poundmaker, he died shortly after his release. Thank you very much for your time listening to this quick review. If you find this type of review video helpful for reviewing on the weekends or after school or if you've been sick, let me know that you have liked it by saying so in the comments of the video or liking the video. And if you have found it very useful, don't forget you can also subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Have a good day.